If you are looking for a GUI or a web management tool to manage your Linux server, then you can use uh, Webmin. Um, in this video, I'm just going to show you how to uh, configure and install Webmin, uh, which is very simple. And this can be handy for people who are new to the Linux world or, or say you have a uh, a lot of servers, uh, Linux based servers, and you have support team which may not be as uh, efficient on the command line of Linux, but you'd want to give them some management capabilities through the web GUI. Uh, so uh, we're gonna try installing it on my CentOS 6.5 uh, box. This should work on other distribution as well. Uh, you can go to the webmin uh, dot, uh, com to. Uh, to find more information, uh, the webmin website. Uh, uh, but I'm just going to show CentOS as best installation, which should also work on Red Hat or Scientific Linux or, or Oracle uh, Linux. Right? So uh, they're all Red Hat best, so it should work. So um, first of all, we have to set up the repository for webmin. So I'm SSH to this box here um, right now. So as you see on the screen, so I'm just going to make this little. Uh, change here. Okay, so um, the first one we're going to do, we're going to create a repository called webmin repo. Okay, just do a VI, you can use nano if you want or whatever you want. Uh, so, and then I'm just going to copy this, uh, copy this uh, repository text here. You can write it down if you want. If you can pause the video. Uh, it may be available on the uh, on the webmin website. Um, so, just gonna create this repository. Sorry, I'll paste it. So that's fine. Done. All right. So you can cat see um. Right. Create the repository. Now we're gonna just get the um, GPG key, the security key. Download it. Okay, download it. And then you can just do RPM import and uh, C. Okay, done. So I'm just gonna remove the key. So this is, uh, you know, for the YAM to install the packages and gonna do a GPG key check. Okay. So now I'm gonna do YAM install webmin. So after that, you can see YAM install webmin. Okay. Uh, you can do sudo if you are doing sudo account. Then you just, you know, do sudo here. You can sudo account, right? Pretty simple. So it's just gonna Okay, so 21 megabyte, not bad. So I'm just gonna Y, yes. Okay, the connection is really fast, looks like. So now it's stalling. I'm just gonna put some node here. Set up repository. I mean, step. And then number two, import the key and key, and then three, install webmin. So we're almost done, I think. Um, come here. Okay. Okay, so done. So let's see if the service is running. 
it's running already so once it installs you should start the service you can also check if it'll be persistent or reboot right if the service will start automatically and reboot so you can do check config list So see here is by default it will be started on three and two, so which is missing. It will be rebooted. If the server is rebooted, it should be starting. So now, as you see here, when it's installed, it give gave me a URL here, right? So it's all as by default 10,000 port, port 10,000. So that needs to be open. Let me see if I have IP tables running. Oh yeah, I have IP tables running. So I'm just gonna stop it for now. We don't wanna go to details with IP tables. Oh, that's a firewall. You know, yeah, so nothing running. So there is no rule. So, but you can configure to allow for uh, 10,000 on your machine. I'm not going to go to that right now. Okay, so now uh, let us. Um, uh, sorry, open up a new window. IP of my machine, it's a VM, so I'm just gonna try it. There you go. So by default, I'm just gonna log in with um, root root account. There you go. I'm into webin now. So now I have a ability to do a lot of things. Like you know, if I go webmin here, I can um, save configuration file. There are a lot of things. Uh, schedule backups. Uh, change language right uh, web main action log you can log stuff right uh, you can have uh, for the support team you can have a special user for web main right um, you can do a lot of things you know you can connect to two fact you can make two factor authentication which is really cool right yeah uh, uh, you can, if you have a lot of users on your machine, you can just you know convert them to webmin users. Uh, you can do a lot of things. Uh, you can also see who's logged in right now. So it's only me logged in, right? You can view logs. Nothing here yet. So now system is the where the fun begins, right? You can do uh, boot up, shut down, uh, stop. Like you can see what's going on, uh, which services are running. Uh, and what the status, right? Uh, you can select a service, right? And see what's going on. You can do restart, uh, reload. You know, you can also it shows you the config file, which is really the action script that does reboot the service, which is really cool. Um, you can do uh, change password, a user account. So you know, if you have a support team that needs to reset passwords, you can do that here. Uh, disk and uh, network file system. You can see what file systems are mapped here. So I can go here and then see what used, what percentage is used, and you can use, save, and then a lot of details, plenty of details. You can once you click on, you can see what's free. Um, you know, uh, mounting is really powerful. I cannot end to be honest. So many features you have here. Over the years, it, it, uh, they evolved quite good. And um, this chorus, um, you know, you can see this chorus here. Uh, you can enable quora, you know, log file rotation. That's a very common thing you see a lot. You know, people fill up their logs and, uh, you know, uh, server dies. So you can set up log rotation through this tool. Um, PAM authentication, like you can. Um, see the authentication information right uh, running processes first process running schedule commands you can schedule a command it's like an add uh, cron job that's another common thing you can configure cron jobs software package updates right so you can see I have a lot of package uh, updates here automatically when I clicked on it it's probably did a yam update and I can just say okay uh, select all actually select all and then I can say um, let's see. Only new. Oh, 
this should not be yeah update selected package this will update all the packages automatically from here you don't have to go to the server um, what I want to show you so um, system documentation hmm. I haven't used that but I think it's just to look for manual pages I think uh, so we'll audit CTL yeah you can get see the audit CTL uh, man page that's really cool um, system logs you know you can see the, what, what's getting logged and you can view those logs from here click on view kind of see what's going on you can search I think uh, for a specific uh, and you can also see which like how many lines you want right so you can say 1000 oh gosh it's a lot right um, user and groups you know you can create a user account groups uh, and management you know I can create groups here um, servers uh, Apache web server uh, you can deploy Apache web server that's pretty good CVS PostgreSQL database server um, status so I have a uh, Postgres running for my foreman which is really good you know you can I can manage this here stop restore services backup the database um, read user mail that's kind of uh, let's see if I'm root I can see cron messages yeah we probably in handy for you know monitoring what's going on on your system um, SSH server you can configure SSH server here um, can you know access control networking authentication a lot of options uh, others let's see what we have command shell so you can, I can run a command here so ls sorry uh, uptime for example like it gives me the uh, uptime command status custom commands I can run custom commands uh, create any custom commands I can you know do a lot of things here I haven't played with that but you know you can take a look file manager probably some sort of Java applet that allow me to transfer files here definitely gonna be Java yeah yes so it's like a built-in um, file manager here so I can just uh, go upload stuff new file sharing mount all oh, lot of things HTTP tunnel I haven't used that file modules shows you what file modules maybe I have running so I can install module from CPAN directly that's really good Wish they had something for Python. Protected web directories. There's nothing I think. SSH login. That may be an SSH client. Okay, let's try that. Let's try my account. Wow, that is so cool. It does anything. Why is it offline? Now it's seeing online. Then it's offline. Strange. So I have to play with that. Maybe there's a bug. System and server status is where I'm gonna show you what's going on. Uh, my MySQL server is not in good shape. Looks like. Oh, not installed. Okay. But I have a DSC. Um, Apache is running, Postgres running, Postfix running. Okay, it's kind of bland, I think. Text login I use that. Uh, I can I can't log into text. But I don't know why would I use that, but it's the option is there. Upload and download. I can you know upload and download files. Some of them are looks redundant to me. Some of it. Bandwidth monitoring. I can say eight zero.
think it ca crashed. May have some. Anyway, Linux firewall. That's what I, I care. Oh, I think I crashed my server with bandwidth monitoring. Okay, let's restart. So that might be a bug. Don't do that. Unless you're sure. Maybe I kind of. Uh, something service IP table status. Oh, it started the IP tables again, I think. For bandwidth monitoring, that's caused the uh, connection drop. If I had a rule for uh, for this, then I wouldn't have to worry about it. So that's the reason. It's not a bug, I think. It's me. Oh, here you see, it's populating, uh, with this time I go there, populating real memory use, virtual memory, local disk space, a lot of good information that you want to see. Um, anyway, um, so networking, you know, Linux firewall, that's what I can manage. I can create rules, right? I can move and add rules, right? That's really great. So it's possible to do the command line where it's like, you know, takes time. Sometimes for some people. Um, network configuration, I can see the network configuration here. Network interfaces, right? I can see what's going on and I can, uh, you know, click on it and I can change it, I believe. DSCP2. Oh, that's great. Um, network services, what's going on here? good it's like you know if you're running rsync and all that things that are nfs export i can add a new export nfs uh, NS client i don't use that anymore some people do you know tcp wrappers grab bootloader you can see the grab boot configuration um, oh that's great you can modify graph from here linux rate i don't have it configured Logical volume management. That's something that I do a lot. You can do logical volume management here. Click on it. That's good. Physical volumes. Click on it. Let's see what's going on. Resize. Oh, that's great. And then logical volumes. Let's see what's going on with my volumes. Size with units, use all free VG sprays, that's good. I can move from one to another. That's really good. So many good. Partitions on local disk gives you my partition information. And smart status maybe um, something that give you smart information like you know, yeah, see if there's an error on any of partitions. Wipe partition is zero out is for security. I think delete all the partition is a different format. Click on it and see what shows. Okay, it goes to the volume group. Printer administrations. Ah, oh, I'm gonna stop using printer these days. Smart drive status. Let me see. Kind of do the smart monitoring. VMware because you know, system time and time server stuff up here. Like I can monitor my uh, NTP settings, change time zone. What can you do actually? Almost everything that you could care. And there's some cluster management. I'm not going to go that far, uh, but if you have a cluster, you can do that. So that's pretty much it.